Thank you. It's great to be here. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm really confused. I just happened to be in the neighborhood. I heard that there was a first regional. I was just at it next door. I guess there are first regionals in every building in Minnesota. So actually, I think, I don't know what I just said to them, but to be fair, I'll try to say the same thing to you. I'm playing this game under protest because every week throughout March and the beginning of April, there are more and more regionals every year. As I said to them, my favorite activity for the entire month of March, anybody I meet, any place I go, I pull out my little first card. I've been doing that for 25 years. But 25 years ago, on the back of my first card, it would always give people the information. Here's our event. It's in a high school gym at the end of the season in Manchester, New Hampshire. And after five or six years, I would have on the back two regionals. And after 10 years, we had a regional every weekend. I could get to every one of them. Now, all of a sudden, I pull out my card and I say to people, here's my schedule. We have, we have 127 events. We have 86 countries represented. We even now have regional events in Australia, in the Middle East, in Mexico, in Canada. First really is becoming global. The good news is we're getting bigger and bigger. We have 46,000 schools. We have 140,000 volunteer mentors. We have 3,700 sponsors just in the U.S. With over 200 universities fighting over the kids, we have over $30 million in scholarships to give away. By any metric, we're growing really well. But as I said, I'm playing this game under protest because weeks ago, when they told me what my schedule for running around the country would be, the reason I was coming back to Minnesota wasn't that between First Lego League, First Tech Challenge, First Robotics, you're kind of leading the country. You have a thousand teams in a state that only has about five million people. You have two side-by-side -side regionals with uh, 63 teams and 60 teams, and then in another city, you got two side-by-side -side I mean, that's not why I'm here, but you should all be very, very proud of that. I came to this one because I was told that one of the guys that's helped me turn this dream into reality year after year after year after year was Dr. Steve Osterley from Medtronic and that since he's now retired from Medtronic, but nobody ever retires from first, they were going to make a big event to recognize him for his incredible support, which has helped create the powerhouse for first that Minnesota is. And it was only late yesterday that they said, Dean, they're not recognizing him at the VIP lunch, they're recognizing him at 7 o'clock in the morning at the VIP breakfast. And I can't get from Manchester, New Hampshire to a 7 o'clock breakfast when I find out about it yesterday evening. And I had guests. So I'm here anyway to make sure everybody does recognize what a few great, visionary, courageous, people can do. And while he's a symbol of that, as I just said to the group next door, the thing that amazes me most about FIRST 
is that somehow the quality of what FIRST is, which is represented by its mentors, sponsors, teachers, parents, volunteers, judges, referees, the kids, it's a vicious cycle. It's not a coincidence that Steve Osterley did what he did. It's not a coincidence that first, as a community, is extraordinary. There's a self-selection process among all the people involved that make it incredible. And I don't think we should ever take that for granted. And again, as I pointed out over there, with 140,000 volunteers, we don't pay them anything. If I had all the money in the world, I still wouldn't pay anything. Because you can't buy passion. You can't buy the commitment. You can't buy the excellence. You can't buy the attitude. You can't buy the experience and knowledge that the people in the first community bring together. I wouldn't try to buy it. But we need to support it and celebrate it which is, as I said, why I was coming out here. But I think we have plenty of people here to spread that celebration. I think I've been making the same message every year for 25 years to the kids. 25 years ago, I said that this country will get the best of what it celebrates. And 25 years ago, America arguably led the world in a whole lot of sporting events, from the Olympics to football to basketball. But you could see that as the rest of the world embraces science and technology and is getting better and better, which is a good thing, we all improve when anybody improves. It's not a win-lose like some sports. But 25 years ago, I said the interesting thing about America is Kids don't do anything that they don't want to do. We have a free culture right down to kids. So we've got to compete for the hearts and minds of kids. We've got to convince them that science, technology, engineering, inventing, math, software, hardware, we've got to convince them it's just as much fun as anything else they can do if you just put it in the same format, sports. Celebrate it the same way. But in those early days, there were a lot of skeptics out there. And the only people that would help me back then was that early group of people with a little courage, willing to try something really new. But as I said, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. They just started attracting more and more and more people like them. And now, although first is becoming a real global force, the one piece of magic that never changed is the quality of the people and the passion they bring to this incredible community. So as I said across the way, I'm here with the same old message I've had for 25 years. The kids that participate in FIRST ought to work hard to A, let everybody that makes this happen for you know that you appreciate this unbelievable opportunity. And B, if you're not a senior yet, you got to commit not only to come back next year, but you've got to commit to work with the other kids you know in the other schools around here so that this opportunity really does become part of a culture of a whole generation. It does become available to all kids everywhere. And if you are a senior, you have to commit to stay involved, to come back next year. If you're at a university, come back, help get the university involved, help bring in more students, come back as a mentor. If you're going off to a company, bring them in as sponsors and supporters and mentors. But FIRST needs to have a really loud voice in a generation of kids. I think the world is going to face, in your lifetime, the first generation where all kids all over the world have the opportunity to be really 
networked and connected to each other. And it's the first generation that maybe will stop creating self-inflicted wounds in every different culture, in every different country, every different political system and cultural system that make arbitrary differences between themselves, things that make them fight with each other. You should be the first generation that's not only connected, but the first generation that speaks the same language, mathematics and science and engineering. The first generation that recognizes you all have the same common problems to solve. It's not each other. Every kid on this planet ought to be concerned about global warming, clean water, food, energy, education, health care. It's going to take all of you to make the world a better place for everybody. And I think FIRST can be a tool to help make that unity happen. So my message is the same. FIRST ought to be the hardest fun you ever had, but you all ought to remember that besides being fun like other sports, FIRST should be giving you the opportunity to think about what life could be like for people that really, really are passionate about technology. The world is in desperate need of people that can use technology for good. If you think playing with these little robots for six or eight weeks is fun, think about having six or eight months or six or eight years or a lifetime, a career to play with technology to work with some of the sponsors that you have here, curing diseases or creating new technologies in industries that don't even exist today. So my message is exactly the same. I thank all the people that make it possible for the kids. I beg the kids to make sure you deserve their support and make sure you thank them yourselves, that you all stay involved so have a great competition. Remember gracious professionalism. Remember to help the rookies and the guys and the women that may not have your experience. And let's all be proud of this. And let's see you at the championship and next year. Thanks a lot. Dean, thank you very much. Dean Kamen, everybody.